John, you have the floor. Everybody knows you, and uh, uh, we are suspended to your lips. <laughs> Jean-Claude, you, you're too kind. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, there are so many things that we could talk about. I'm going to try to limit myself to just uh, two. Uh, one, I'll, uh, uh, my good friend uh, Akinarin Hori has described uh, an outlook that I think is quite uh, congenial and quite plausible. And what he has said is that there are reasons to think that the outlook may be somewhat more benign than the consensus. If I understood you correctly, it's not saying that worse outcomes are not impossible, they are possible, but that the consensus is a little bit too pessimistic for the reasons that you uh, laid out. And I, I find myself in, uh, in broad agreement. But I thought I would step back and uh, remember there's been so much focus on monetary policy recently for good reason, but I think it's worth going back and noting that this comes after a long period in which monetary policy has demonstrated that it is less powerful in controlling the economy than had been thought. And uh, that, or to put it another way, that in the wake of the global financial crisis, that we've had a series of unexpected developments in, um, in the, especially in the advanced economies that were not anticipated and we still don't understand completely but have uh, been much more powerful in um, uh, shaping the financial and economic environment than, than policy has been. The, we've had a period of slow growth, of low investment, of a uh, uh, lower than anticipated uh, labor force participation, and at the same time, unexpectedly strong corporate profits. A combination has been associated with sustained, unexpectedly low real interest rates that has produced the unexpected result that despite the very rapid growth of public debt in the context of the global financial crisis, that for advanced economies, that debt service as a percentage of public sector revenues in the advanced economies actually fell, did not rise. So a kind of amazingly benign uh, period that also was associated because of this combination of lack of pressure on public finances despite the rapid rise in debt and the uh, unexpectedly strong corporate profitability produced very strong performance of asset prices, especially equity prices. So to me, this lays out uh, and, and what we saw, of course, the, that despite the um, uh, generalized uh, agreement on a inflation targeting format for central banks and agreement on universal agreement essentially on 2% as the target, uh, no central bank seemed to be capable of hitting that target. And virtually all persistently uh, had inflation below, below target. Then have uh, come the, the shocks uh, that were also unanticipated, the effect of COVID and the war that resulted in this rapid increase or this dramatic increase in inflation that caught central banks by surprise and demonstrated that since their models failed to anticipate, that suggested underneath that, as I said, these factors that appeared important in the wake of the global financial crisis have been incompletely understood. And therefore, their incorporation into models produced models that didn't produce 
the uh, accurate uh, forecasts. So it leads us with some uh, important questions. Uh, clearly, it, what we saw in inflation was a combination of strong support for demand through fiscal means and otherwise in a context of constricted supply. What, uh, and I think what Nori Hori had told us is what we're going to see now is a recovery of supply and a, wake, a waning of the effects of stimulus that is going to correct the imbalance that produced the inflation. And what we don't know is how quickly it's going to come back, how quickly inflation will come back. Uh, what we have seen is that the run-up in long-term interest rates has been less than had been anticipated. Either this would be interpreted as that investors expect in recession is coming, they anticipate, uh, and therefore that it's going to be uh, an unhappy road to uh, low inflation. And I would say this is still uh, uncertain. And if we need to look at uh, some aspects that will be critical in determining the, this outlook, one uh, is, of course, the obvious performance of, of wages. So far, wages have lagged behind inflation. Either you can take that as an end. The, con the consensus view tends to say this is going to, there's going to be catch up and that wages are going to accelerate and that we are going to end up with a wage price spiral that will be uh, uh, truncated only by conventional means of uh, monetary policy action that will produce a downturn. But that's just a surmise based on the notion that what happened before will happen again. What we don't know is what has happened to expectations after a decade of unexpectedly low inflation. And, uh, but uh, obviously, the formation of, wage expe of uh, inflation expectations, including in the labor market, is going to be critical. It will be critical to see if corporate profits can be, will prove to be resilient, which means that asset prices also should be more resilient than is anticipated. And the, uh, the course of long-term interest rates, real long-term interest rates, is going to be very critical for the outlook for fiscal policy in the near term. Because if long-term rates stay high or go higher, there's going to be tremendous pressure on, on the uh, fiscal accounts in the advanced economies because we're going to start to see a rise in debt service costs as a percentage of revenues. So big unknowns, I end up also a little bit more optimistic than the consensus, but that may just reflect my own personality rather than analysis. These are, but there are critical things to look at and it strikes me that the, what I think are most important seem not to be at the forefront of discussion. Let me just add uh, two uh, other uh, remarks. And that is uh, what we can see coming, almost certainly, and it's, this is something that is not a, a new insight, is that developing country debt is going to be a problem. We can see it coming. We, can s we know the outlines of the problem uh, in the, let me say, the outlines of the problem of the solution, which is that the big change in the composition of the creditors of the developing economies that has rendered the Paris Club ineffective in dealing with the problem and requires new cooperation recognizing that the Paris Club was no longer the appropriate venue, the G20 created the common framework. I'm repeating what I said uh, yesterday. Uh, 
the common framework so far has been notable by its sluggish progress, not to be more critical than that. Uh, this is an issue that I posited yesterday is a litmus test for the outlook for cooperation at, the, uh, at a global level. And the, in essence, to a certain degree, the relevance of the G20. The framework, the G20's replacement of the Paris Club, the common framework for debt treatment, must be made to work. There needs to be a compromise that makes it work. Otherwise, it uh, will be not the uh, biggest issue for the global economy, but for those worried about global inequality, there needs to be a solution. Thanks. I've talked too long. Thank you. Thank you very, very much indeed, uh, uh, John. You, you are optimistic or you are confident, but with a lot of nuances, if I understand well. <laughs>